Greetings, I am a woman in my mid-forties, and I'll be maintaining a degree of vagueness in the details to protect my anonymity. My ex-husband and I first crossed paths during my late teens, and after three years of being together, I found myself expecting a child. Given the unexpected nature of the pregnancy, we made the mutual decision to tie the knot. While our financial situation wasn't ideal for marriage, we believed we could make it work with a baby on the way. He picked up extra work shifts, and I did my best to contribute as well. Before we knew it, our first child had arrived. When our little one was about nine months old, I discovered that I was pregnant once again. Our finances were stretched thin, and I was hesitant to proceed with the pregnancy due to the toll the previous one had taken on my health. However, my ex-husband insisted that we go through with it. By the time I reached my mid-twenties, I was already a mother of two. This was not how I had envisioned my life, but at that point, my options felt limited. Our marital life, I must admit, was far from a happy one. He resented me for not being more physically intimate, but after working two shifts myself and returning home with toddlers from daycare, I was hardly in the mood for such intimacy. The days seemed to blur together, and before we knew it, a year had passed. I had hoped that things would improve as our children grew, but sadly, it was quite the opposite. My relationship with my husband deteriorated rapidly. There seemed to be no solution in sight. By the time our oldest child was 12 and the younger one was 11, approximately nine years ago, I received a devastating diagnosis of breast cancer. The prognosis was grim, and the doctors believed I had less than six months to live. When my husband learned of this, his reaction was surprising. He became distant and emotionally closed off. I initially assumed he needed time to process the news, but that wasn't the case at all. It turned out that he had decided to divorce me because of the prognosis. In his eyes, I was a lost cause, destined to die soon, and he thought it would be better for our children not to witness my passing. Hearing those words shattered me, and I lost the will to carry on. I reached a breaking point to the extent that one of my physicians recommended trying a new experimental medication that was showing promising results. At first, I hesitated. I hadn't seen my children in over three weeks, and every attempt to reach my ex-husband resulted in him hanging up on me or denying me access to them. Still, I considered that perhaps giving the medication a chance might help me regain some semblance of normalcy and possibly salvage our marriage. With that in mind, I decided to take the medication. It did work, although it required a mastectomy to remove the tumors primarily located in my right breast. The doctors were optimistic about my prognosis, but my husband's reaction was far from encouraging. When I shared the good news with him, and we met in person, he took one look at me and expressed his lack of physical attraction to me in my fragile state. He couldn't understand why he should remain with someone he wasn't drawn to and he informed me of his intention to proceed with divorce proceedings. To say I fell into a deep depression would be a vast understatement. Eventually, the divorce papers arrived in the mail, and after ignoring them for a week, coupled with numerous messages from both my husband and my children, I finally signed them. It took me some time to come to terms with the fact that my family, the only thing I had known for the past 12 years, was no longer there. I felt overwhelmingly despondent, but I forced myself to venture out and explore new experiences in the hope of finding something worth living for. That's when I discovered rock climbing. There was something about the struggle and the pain you endure while scaling those chunks of rock, all to witness the most breathtaking views that made every hardship worthwhile. This new passion resonated deeply within me, and over the last eight years, I became an avid rock climber. Through these climbing sessions, I crossed paths with my now husband. We met some years after my divorce, and after being friends for a year, we decided to take the leap and start dating. Despite having a few trust issues, he was patient enough to take things slow with me. When he asked me to marry him, I didn't hesitate to say yes. I had already formed strong bonds with his family, and my relationship with his daughter felt almost like she was my own. So, marrying him was a decision that didn't require much heavy contemplation. My husband is a lawyer at a prominent firm in our city, which affords us a comfortable lifestyle. My stepdaughter, who is about to turn 18, 
is dearly loved by both her parents and their extended family. She is set to gain access to her trust fund, which reportedly holds more than $2 million. Being a driven and career-oriented young woman, she intends to use the money to attend the Ivy League University where she has been accepted. What I didn't anticipate was the fallout after she publicly thanked everyone, including me, for supporting her career and trust fund endeavors. Over the past nine years, my attempts to reach out to my biological children have been met with rejection. They brushed me aside, ignored my calls, and made it abundantly clear they wanted nothing to do with me. I suspected this was due to my ex-husband's influence. However, when they saw my stepdaughter's post about the trust fund, they suddenly reappeared in my life, bombarding me and my stepdaughter with messages, essentially asking for money. They expect me to step back into their lives and play the role of their mother just because I married into a wealthy family. I find myself at a loss about how to handle this situation. While my husband is understanding, I sense that this situation will worsen if I don't address it promptly. I am uncertain about what to do next. Thank you all for your replies and comments. I took your advice and confronted my ex-husband. I warned him that if he continued to harass my family, I would obtain a restraining order against him. He argued back, claiming that I hadn't cared enough about the family to rebuild our relationship. It was evident he felt entitled to my resources. Frustrated by his attitude, I ended the call. I felt shattered after our conversation, questioning whether I had been a bad mother to my biological children. Their rejection over the years made me wonder if it was my fault. Since my last update, my stepdaughter has been continuously harassed by my ex-husband. She described a man stalking her, and I am certain it is him. I urged my husband to pursue a restraining order based on the evidence we had of these incidents. We successfully obtained the restraining order against my ex-husband, and since then, the harassment has ceased. However, my stepdaughter remains deeply disturbed by the experience. I can't shake the feeling that all of this is my fault. I can't help but think that if I hadn't entered their lives, they might have been happier. I've discussed this matter with my husband, and he's doing his best to assure me that this situation isn't my fault. However, whenever I look at my stepdaughter, I can't help but feel an overwhelming sense of guilt. I hope that, with time, I'll begin to feel better. I'm struggling to understand why my life has taken such a chaotic turn. It's been a while, hasn't it? My last update was about a month and a half ago. Today, I'm here to share some news with you all. My eldest biological child reached out to me, expressing his guilt for posting those provocative messages just to get my attention. He wanted to apologize to my stepdaughter in person, but I wasn't comfortable with the idea of letting him near her. However, Hearing his voice made me realize how much of his life I've missed, even though I gave birth to him. These emotions weighed heavily on me for some time. After careful consideration, I agreed to stay in touch with him, as I wanted to get to know my child better. I also learned a bit about why they were so reluctant to contact me. Essentially, my ex-husband had told them that I wanted to end the relationship after my cancer diagnosis to spare them from the pain. He convinced them, that if they didn't go along with the breakup, I wouldn't have had the strength to do it myself. So both of my children decided to follow their dad's lead and distance themselves from me. Hearing this revelation made me reassess everything I thought I knew. And for now, I've chosen to maintain contact with my eldest child until I feel otherwise. I'm proceeding with caution, and he mentioned that he will speak with my youngest child as well when the time is right. We'll see what the future holds, as time will be the best judge of their character. I prefer not to provide further updates on this post, as I'm concerned it might attract more attention than necessary. I appreciate all the support and advice I've received. Thank you. Hey, OP, I'm so sorry you're stuck in such a difficult situation. You deserve much better than what you're currently going through. Your ex-husband's behavior is truly appalling, and it's disheartening that he has placed you in this predicament. His entitlement is hard to fathom, and his belief that he has any right over your husband's money is unjustifiable. Please consider getting a restraining order to protect yourself and your current family from your past family. OP, you are not in the wrong here. You didn't ask for your ex-husband to harass you, and you deserve support and understanding during this challenging time. He made the decision on his own. 
This isn't your responsibility in any way, shape, or form. Please try not to carry the burden of guilt for circumstances that were beyond your control. You shouldn't blame yourself. You've tried your best to be there for them, but every time you reached out, they shut you out. I'm certain your ex-husband played a role in this situation, and you shouldn't let it affect your self-esteem. I'm a 43-year-old woman with a 24-year-old son. I had him when I was quite young, and his father was never involved in his life. When he found out I was pregnant, he chose to leave. Without his support, I had to provide for my child entirely on my own. Fortunately, my parents were supportive and helped me raise my son while I finished my degree and worked my way through university. My early 20s weren't what I had envisioned, but I never regretted having my child. He has always been my best friend, or at least he was until he got into a relationship with Grace, a pseudonym I'm using. Grace is 23, and they met in high school. I didn't mind them dating because I've always been a liberal but strict mother. I had frank conversations with my son about the challenges of teen pregnancy and was very clear about my expectations. Luckily, he understood and avoided making any rash decisions. However, ever since they started dating, I noticed a change in my son. He started distancing himself from me, which I could attribute to him becoming a man and wanting his face. But it wasn't just that. He refused to spend time with me and avoided genuine conversations. I tried to figure out if I had done something to upset him, but I couldn't pinpoint the issue until I met Grace in person. The moment I saw her, I realized what the problem was. Grace harbored animosity toward me. I could sense it in her eyes during dinner. She often made snide remarks about how she thought I must be lonely because my partner had left me, and I had to work long hours to provide for myself. She was incredibly opinionated and unbending in her beliefs. From what I gathered, she despised the fact that I chose to be a single parent without dating around. According to her, I was monopolizing my son's life by not providing him with a father figure. She believed that if I had given my son a male role model, he would have grown into a better person, a real man, she asserted. This conversation took place around six months into their relationship. Recognizing the alarming signs, I attempted to talk to my son about it, but he promptly dismissed my concerns. He argued that Grace made him happy, and I needed to respect his individuality. While I understood his perspective, I couldn't help but worry. In my heart, I hoped their relationship would run its course, but to my surprise, they stayed together over the years. It wasn't inherently a bad thing, but the red flags I noticed kept multiplying, and it felt like I was the only one seeing them. Despite the strain in my relationship with my son, I tried my best to be happy for him. I wanted nothing but the best for my child. Two months ago, they came to announce their engagement. I was a bit taken aback by the news, but ultimately, I was happy because my son was happy. During the wedding preparations, my mother asked me to uphold our family tradition with my soon-to-be daughter-in-law, as I had never gotten married. The tradition involved breaking a plate after the wedding a fun custom passed down through generations. I thought it was a small gesture to honor our heritage. When I approached them about the tradition, Grace scoffed at me, suggesting that I should abandon my culture since we were now in America. According to her, Americans didn't engage in such uncalf behavior as breaking expensive china to preserve outdated traditions from our homeland. To my shock, my son sided with her, insisting that I should adapt to the times and let go of the tradition. He even went so far as to claim that since he was born in America and his dad was American, he felt no connection to that aspect of his heritage. Those words deeply shook me. I felt incredibly humiliated, so I ended the conversation. However, they persisted, posting numerous passive-aggressive messages on social media, vilifying me in the process. It was heartbreaking to witness the extent of my son's animosity toward me. Grace had complete control over him and I couldn't help but feel disappointed in myself. Determined to take a stand, I decided to make a significant change. After years of hard work, saving, and careful budgeting, I managed to buy a cozy place in the suburbs. The original plan was for the wedding to take place in my backyard, which bordered a beautiful forest. My son wanted to incorporate nature into the ceremony. Despite this, I saw several social media posts from them, subtly attacking me. 
Aware of their budget constraints, I knew booking a venue would exceed their financial limits. Frustrated by their behavior, especially after seeing the fifth post targeting me, I informed them that I wouldn't host the wedding at my house anymore. I explained that they were not welcome and suggested they find a venue that better suited their vision of an American wedding. When they resorted to name-calling, I made a firm decision. My son would no longer receive the inheritance he expected due to his disrespectful behavior. Since then, my phone has been inundated with voicemails, some with my son pleading for reconsideration while Grace screamed in the background. Others were just angry rants, blaming me for their marital issues. The news spread, and now I'm bombarded with messages from people calling me an a-hole and questioning my decision. Two nights ago, my son showed up at my doorstep inebriated, begging me to let him in. He cried, slurring his words, and banged on the door. I chose not to open it, trying to enforce boundaries. Perhaps I had been too lenient, allowing him to forget that I'm his mother, deserving of respect. From what I gathered, Grace always desired to live in the suburbs, and my house was her ideal choice. If I didn't comply, the marriage might not proceed, as Grace demanded a provider. I contemplated telling my son to work hard and find a solution, but I remained silent. In those moments, I faced the painful realization that I hadn't raised the son I had hoped for. He stayed on my porch for about three hours before arranging an Uber to leave. I feel conflicted, torn between guilt and the belief that I'm not in the wrong. Thank you to everyone for your comforting and kind messages. I truly appreciate your support and reassurance especially those insisting that I'm not entirely at fault. For those wondering why I never married after having my son, I realized I didn't need a man to provide for us. I could support my son and myself as long as I worked hard enough. My brothers served as positive father figures, and my son always felt the love of a family without me being tied down to a marriage. Regarding my son, he's remained silent since that night. I received a couple of voicemails from Grace, blaming me for everything. I can't help but feel like I've lost my son, but only time will tell how this situation unfolds. Recently, they broke up, and my son came to my place to inform me about it. Surprisingly, he seemed relatively unshaken. He asked if I had always known Grace wasn't the one. When I didn't respond, he acknowledged that he should have listened to me in the past. According to him, Grace was primarily interested in our wealth, hoping for a lavish lifestyle funded by us. When I refused to give him his inheritance share, Grace's doubts grew, leading to their breakup. I empathized with my son, but oddly, he handled it well. Having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation over Coco, reminiscent of our talks when he was younger, gave me hope that our relationship could be salvaged. I'm grateful for your insights and critiques, and I acknowledge my flaws. As he stays with me over the next few days, I hope we can talk and figure out what works and what doesn't now that he's a young man of 24. Additionally, some pointed out Grace's racism, which my son may or may not have recognized. Regardless, it's concerning that he's ignoring it. I appreciate your advice, but I hope for the chance to understand my son's perspective better. Thank you all for tuning in today. Remember, if you have a story of your own, feel free to email us using the address provided in the description. If you'd like to be featured, let us know and we'll pin your story at the top of the comments. Please like and subscribe, as it greatly supports the channel. See you in the next one.